in my heart, oh God. It's funny, in the early part of my day, when I come out on the porch, it'll say 100 degrees, and it won't feel that hot, or it'll feel hot. And then I'll come out in the afternoon, and it'll say almost 100, and it won't feel hot at all. It'll feel cool. And it's kind of weird, that dichotomy of how God seems to work things in my life, that the same temperature could feel different in different parts of the day that I'm involved in. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it's pretty cool. Because <laughs> otherwise, that'd be toasty and roasty out here. When you watch our foundations crumble, have you noticed the changes in the morals of our country during the past few years? When I flipped the television dial to CNN and caught a report on what they were doing on the Berkeley campus with condoms, something happened inside me. Oh, Father, I thought, we've gone too far. We have hit the depths of sin. There is no turning back. When I turned on Nightline and saw what the British Broadcast Company had produced in reaction to cases of AIDS reported in England, my body was racked with sobs as I went to the Lord in prayer. I could not believe that the British, or anyone for that matter, could so blatantly describe what a person should do in order to avoid AIDS without ever once dealing with the issue of morality. When I picked up an issue of Newsweek and read an article on kids and contraceptives, my heart ached as I noted the following. The teen pregnancy rate is dramatically higher in the United States than in other Western nations. Recalling a scene from a national television program, when a boy's mother finds his contraceptives, in a heart-to-heart -heart talk she says, just make sure whatever you do, it is the right time in your life. Times are a-changing, as the song once said, and they are changing very rapidly. And in the midst of these changes, there's confusion, there's chaos, there's conflict. Everyone is doing what seems right in their own eyes. The very foundations of our society are crumbling. If we are going to survive, if we survive the holy judgment of God, which is here in part and yet is to come in greater measure, then you need to do two things. First, you need to know what never changes. It is God, and he does not change. And it is his word. It always remains the same. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He will never change. His character will never change. And it is because of this that God, in his righteousness, will have to judge and will judge our iniquity, all of us. America cannot continue the way it is going without experiencing the just judgment of God. And of that, we always ask for mercy and grace. God cannot alter the word which has gone out from his lips. What God has said must come to pass. Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, nor the covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. None of them. Such were some of you. In reality, that was all of us. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. Do you know or do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take away the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? May it never be. Flee immorality. Every other sin that a man commits is outside the body, but the immoral man sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6, 9-11, and 15, 18, and 20. This is what we are failing to share with our world, and we must share it. There must be a standard, there must be a reality, and we must recognize that while we have freedom, it's not freedom to sin. God never gave us that freedom. God has set us as watchmen upon the wall, and if we as his children see God's sword of judgment coming and do not warn the people, the sword will surely come, but their blood shall be upon our hands. Son of man, I have appointed you a watchman to the house of Israel. 
Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, warn them from me. Ezekiel 3.17 Our young people need a wholesome dose of the fear of God in them, as does the rest of our nation. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, Proverbs 8.13. And evil is that which we claim to be freedom. O oh, beloved, where are the watchmen to sound God's trumpet and warn the people? What are you doing as his watchman on the wall to let people who know who God is and what his word says? May I make some suggestions? Pray consistently for the moral situation in our nation. Ask God to bring us to godly sorrow that will lead to repentance. But bring us to godly sorrow. Put godly pressure on your PTAs and city officials to present what God says about our sexuality. Josh McDowell has an excellent video series, Why Wait? And Precept Ministries has one called Sex, Teens, and Dating. If the PTAs will not permit this, work through the churches or plan some citywide campaigns. You know, as I read this and I look ahead, the activism is nice. But the reality is you need to walk in complete and total obedience to God's word. No compromise. The world is looking for people who really believe and live what they say. And this is exactly the problem with much of the professing church of Jesus Christ, isn't it? We honor him with our lips, but our hearts are far from him. For if we really loved him, we would keep his commandments. Our marriages, our families, our churches, our society, our morals are crumbling. The pure, unadulterated word of God is what our nation needs. Remember, you are God's watchman on the wall. Part of knowing that and part of recognizing that our society has destroyed itself is the recognition that we sometimes promote and push people into places that they would not go had we not allowed that to happen. And so when you see things, if you allow them into your home and into your life, you will cause that to happen in your own household. If you have brought into your house, you know, constant warfare on songs and and music and entertainment and you are constantly fighting then guess what when your children grow up if they delight you know in treating others with less than respect and they have no nobility of character are you so surprised because we reap what we sow and that which goes into the eye if it all be light then it's light if it be darkness how great is the darkness within said jesus i have no examples to pull from in my life. My life was one of nothing but failures of people around me. My mother's, my mother, my missing father, my absentee stepfathers, my multiple relations that seemed to have come in and out of the household, a family that seemed to have been split apart and going off all in their own directions and finding their own thing until God saved me and then worked his salvation backwards to save all the rest. And he did. But I had no example to look forward to, and I had nothing to look at, until one day I saw in my sister's son someone who was raised by a godly parent who said, I'm not going to allow this music, or I'm not going to allow this television program, I'm not going to allow this to influence my son, but I am going to allow his father who is here with me and lives with me and is married to me to raise him in the way that he should go. And as I watch that, because that man likewise had no father, I can see how God can take the brokenness and make the rightness out of it. So if you lose hope, if you somehow lose your way and you think that just because you're a broken part and you can't bring nobility to your family and you can't last in your marriage and you can't stand up and be godly I have seen it I know it can happen you can be the one you can change the next generation to be saved though we have no time left and I don't believe that you'll ever see that generation grow up you can save the children from their own destruction simply by living the way God would have you to do you can be the one, and I don't care what your past is or what your present is. I don't care if you're a stripper, a prostitute, or a street banger, or a gangbanger. You can change that and become the most noble person that 
child has ever seen. Because if they call you father, they're looking for someone to lead. Or if they call you mother, they want you to stand up for what you believe in. And though they may not follow it, when they are old, they will return to it. I pray that that message gets to you. That Jesus would be with you all the way. That if you have children, you would teach them in the way they should go. Because this is a, day, a nation that has lost its way. And it will not be returned. It will not be redeemed. It will be judged.